Lesson number two, the power of perception in business opportunity scanning and identification intelligence. Let's go ahead. Now, perception in business opportunity scanning and identification intelligence is very important, especially when you look at the image before you. Look at, they both are shouting. One is saying, it is six. Another one is saying, it is uh, nine. One is saying, it is six. Another one is saying, it is nine. But you see, they're both right, but I will want to be at the side where I'm saying it as nine. Personally, I will want to be at the side where I'm seeing it as nine. Perception can be simply understood as the way in which something, an occurrence, and or sensation is regarded, understood, or is interpreted. It can be understood as the way something, an occurrence, or a sensation is regarded, understood, or interpreted. In other words, perception is how you see reality. Perception is how you see reality. If you look at that image there, they're arguing. This person is says is half full. And this person is said is half empty. This person is saying it is half full. And this person is saying it is half empty. They are all right. They are both right. But you see, I will want to be where I can see it as what? As half full than where I can see it as what? Half empty. I will want to be at the side where I can see it as half full than where I can see it as half empty. Now, what am I driving at? What am I driving to? You are gonna look at it when we get there. Truism number five. Truism number five. Your perception of reality determines your actions and your inactions. Hence, your perception becomes your reality. Your perception of reality determines your actions and your inactions. Hence, your perception becomes your reality. In other words, how you see things and how you see life will determine how you approach life and how you interpret it. The same for your ideas. How you see things and how you perceive things will determine how you perceive or will determine how you work on your ideas. Let's look at the story of the two shoe sellers. Okay, the story of the two shoe sellers. It's an interesting story and you must have heard it. Once upon a time, a shoe company sent two salesmen to a certain country to determine the market potential for their product. One salesman was sent to the east coast of the country while the other salesman was sent to the west coast of the country. But both salesmen completed a basic survey of the targeted market and they called back to the home office and listen and hear what they said. The first salesman, the one sent to the east coast, reported, quote, no one here wears shoes. There is no market for us here. I am on the next ship coming back home. And the company was so disappointed with all the money they've spent. The other salesman sent this message. Good morning, sir. No one here wears any shoes. There is a huge market for us here. Send me inventory fast. Let's sell shoes to all of them. The same story the same situation, the same occurrence, the same happening, the same event, different interpretation. Why? Due to perception. Your perception of reality 
may not be reality, but your perception of reality will always color your reality. I had polio when I was a little over a year. By age six, I had become perfectly suicidal. Around age eight, thereabout, I had seven orthopedic surgery to be able to work with crutches and calipers. Ladies and gentlemen, you say I had overcome all the odds to become very successful by any standard. Don't think it is um, is boasting. But you see, whether you talk about academic or business or any other parameter, the Lord has been so wonderful. But the point is very simple. God did it by just changing my perception. God made me to understand that disability can be, disability can be an asset instead of a reliability. Then being disabled or physically challenged, or however you want to romantically call it, could not, may not be a death sentence. It can be something that will help me focus more, do more, become more. When God helped me to change that perception of myself, every other thing changed. People loved me more, helped me more, wear my life more, I become better person, become a better person. I became a better person, had better friends, I enjoyed life, and became successful. So truly and very truly, perception matters. Whether you think is four or you think is three, you are right. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. But the only truth is. I would rather be on the side of four than be where I will see it as three. And one beautiful thing about life is you can always change where you are sitting in the scheme of things. You can move from where you are sitting as three to where you are sitting as four. But you need to bring down your arguments and be able to be interested in knowing the truth. Let's look at the functional view of business. The functional view of business. Now, if you look at the drawing online, if you look at the drawing on your board, you will see that there's a question mark, then the question mark to the light bulb, the light bulb to the work, but the work to the dollars. So if you look around, you're gonna see there are so many things around you that are asking for solution. That is the question mark. There are many questions that are asking for solution from power, to agriculture, to agri-processing, to agri-marketing, to agro-allied, to everything around you is asking for solution. But you see, a lot of us are happy with white collar job. I'm a university academic. The job, I think, was not taking a lot of my energy. And I wanted more. I asked them, what are we supposed to do? They said, we teach, we research, we do community service. And I started doing community service. By the time I find it, I'm doing something for United Nations. I'm doing something for NDDC. I'm doing something for Shell. I'm doing something for uh, Central Bank. I'm doing something for, you know, and it kept growing, okay? So the point is, look around. You're gonna see quite a lot of questions that are begging for answer. Lots and lots of them begging for answers. But you see, there is a very important aspect to that. Now, you can interpret this question from your perception. Immediately you interpret this question from an extrinsic point of view. If you give an extrinsic interpretation of the problem you are seeing in your environment, what happens? You are going to throw it back to the government and say, these government people are stupid. These government people are fools. These government people, they don't know anything. Okay, but if you want to interpret it intrinsically and you say, there's a reason God made me to see this problem. And you said, I can do something regarding this problem. If I cannot do anything about this problem, God would have made me to see that. If you interpret it from an intrinsic perspective, light bulb will come up on your head. When the light bulb comes up, 
it will come with solutions. But you see, the solution is always 1% of the whole thing you are going to do. So you need to put in the work. I think Thomas, Ed some Thomas Edison said, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration, 99% sweating. So when you are now ready to put in the work, when you put in the work, remember the dollars are hidden. The dollars are hidden behind the solution. There's no way somebody will give you money if you are not ready to do the work. There's no way somebody will give you money consistently unless you are a politician and you take our money from the coffers without putting in the right effort. And nobody can give you money if you have not produced something. So when you have an idea, ideas are nothing. Remember, ideas without execution will bring frustration. Always remember that. Ideas without execution will bring frustration. Ideas without execution will bring frustration. If you understand that, always put work in your, into your idea. When you do, your ideas will now produce through work, products, services, processes, platforms. But even if you remain at this level of platform and products and services, and you go no further, and you do no more, you will still have the problem, the problem of making money out of it. So you need, you need to go further than, than just producing something. You must find the targeted market who can buy this my stuff. You must find them. When you find the people who can buy your stuff, you do what? You sell your stuff to them. Don't see them and close your mouth. See them and sell your stuff to them. When you sell your stuff to them, what happens? You make money. Okay? You make money. So that is the progression. That's the, I want you to snap this thing into your mind. I don't say snap physically. You can snap physically. You can do your screenshot. But I'm saying snap it into your mind. Whenever you see a problem, you do what? You are ready to interpret it, not extrinsically, but intrinsically. When you interpret it intrinsically, you are ready to put in the work. Because when you interpret it intrinsically, the ideas will jump up, then you put in the work. When you put in the work, the work will amount to nothing. The work cannot just give you dollars. The work cannot give you cities and, and naira and pounds and euros. The work can give you products, services, processes, platforms. You must go out there, find the target market, and sell this thing to them, and they will give you money. So remember, value, whenever value goes out, it returns to source. Also remember that money is something, a reward that you are given because somebody has assessed your value. If you have a value and nobody's assessing it, you will not make money. Okay, so I do hope you understood this part very well. So, we will have time for questions, but let's go over. Let's go over. To lesson number three. 